This is CPM Pre-Calculus Chapter 1, number 148. Find the value of x in each triangle below. Okay, so let's look at A. A, A's triangle is a right triangle. Okay, only A we're looking at a right triangle. So immediately we know we can use um, SOHCAHTOA. Right, we could use our trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. And this is just the memory tool. So looking at angle x, we know right here, this is the hypotenuse. And angle x, we know 20 is opposite and 12 is adjacent, right? Because we have the hypotenuse. This one opens to the opposite side and adjacent. So which one uses, we don't want to use hypotenuse because that side's unknown. Which one uses opposite and adjacent? Well, opposite and adjacent is tangent. So tangent of x is equal to opposite over adjacent or 20 over 12. Okay, so tan of x is equal to 20 over 12. And we know well, what's the opposite of tan x? Well, this function is wrapped with tangent. To unwrap it, we need to use the inverse function of tan. So it's the inverse tan. We do that to both sides. Tangents inverse and tangent cancel each other out. We're just left with what's inside the parentheses, x. So x is equal to the inverse tan of 20 over 12. So let's bring out our calculators and we can go ahead and enter in second tan gives us the inverse tan and 20 over 12 before I compute this I want to make sure what mode I'm in I'm going to get degrees okay so this is equal to approximately 59.0 well the 3 rounds up if I stop there to a 4 59.04 degrees. So I'm going to write here that x is 59.04 degrees. Okay, so now let's move on to part B. Part B is asking us now <clears throat> this side right here, right? The value of x is not an angle, it's a side. And this is not a right triangle, it's just a triangle. It's this side looks, they're all less than 90 degrees, so we know it's going to be um, acute. Um, it, it looks to be scalene, right, because all the sides look to be different lengths. So let's go ahead and determine, well, what, ca what can help us get this? And what can help us is either going to be our law of signs, the law of signs being we have the ratio of sine of a over A is equal to sine of angle B divided by side B is equal to the ratio of sine of angle C divided by side C. <clears throat> okay? Or we might have to use the law of cosines. Okay, so this, again, both of these you should be familiar with. Um, this one is basically, it starts off like our Pythagorean theorem c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Then we subtract 2 times ab times cosine of angle c. And we can also solve for b squared and a squared similarly. This is going to be b squared is going to be a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of angle b. And a squared is b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of angle a. Okay, <clears throat> so let's quickly label this triangle. Okay, if this is A, B, C, then this is side C across from it, side B across from angle B, and side A across from angle A. Little, little letters for the sides, big letters for the angles or vertices. Okay, <clears throat> so we know side B. What do we know? We know side B, we know um, angle A, and we know angle C, but we want to know side C is X, okay? 
So <clears throat> let's see, what can we use to, to determine side C? Well, since we know angle C, right, we also know side B, but we don't know side A, so we can't use this one. Um, B, we know B, we don't know A, so we can't use this one. We don't know A, so we can't use this one. So we can't use these. Um, can we use any of the law of sines? Well, sine of A over A. So we know A, but we do not know <coughs> um, little a, so no. We know sine of, we know B, no, we do not know B, so we can't use this one. And we do not, oh, we know C, but we don't know little c. So, so this is what we want to find out is little c. So right now it kind of seems like we're stuck, right? We can't use any of these. So are there any other, is there anything else that we can use to help us figure out um, any of the missing information? Well, remember that for a triangle, add the three angles, three angles, and you get what? You get 180 degrees. So always remember that angle A plus angle Angle B plus angle C, you add them up, you get 180 degrees. If we do this, <clears throat> we are going to, we know angles A and C, so we can immediately find angle B, right? So angle, so to find angle B, we know that angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 degrees. So angle A is 65. Angle B, we do not know. Angle C is 80, and that's equal to 180 degrees. Okay, so combine like terms. So we have angle B plus 80 plus 65 is 145 equals 180. Subtract 145 from both sides. Okay, and we get angle B is equal to um, <coughs> 35 degrees. Okay, you can plug this in your calculator, and we have angle B is equal to 35 degrees. All right, so now can we then use this information to find, to help us find side C? So let's use a different color. Um, so we, we still, we know, I'm going to shade in what we know. We know angle A, but we don't know side A. We know now angle B, and we know side B, right? Angle B and side B. We, we know angle C, but we don't know side C. So we can use these two right here to help us, right? I could say sine of B over side B is equal to sine of angle C over side C. I can fill those in now. Angle B is 35. Side B is 10. Sine of angle C is 80, and little c is our unknown x, okay? Now, how do I solve this for x? So, since I only have one variable unknown, I can just multiply both sides by x. These cancel out, okay? Then I want to get x alone, so now I have, let's move this over a little, I have sine x sine 35 over 10 equals the sine of 80. Okay, so if I multiply both sides by 10, I'm going to cancel these. I can do this on this side as well. Okay, <clears throat> and I get x sine 35 degrees equals to 10 times sine of 80 or 80 sine of 80 times 10, either way. And I can divide both sides by sine of 35 degrees. And then I get x. I get x is equal to 10 times sine of 80 degrees divided by sine of 35 degrees. Okay? So let's plug that in. <clears throat> I want to make sure my calculator is in degrees mode since I'm going to be using degrees. It is. So I just multiply 10 times sine of 80 degrees divided by sine of 35 degrees. 
and that gives me x is approximately 17.1 and I'm going to round the 6 up to a 7 okay and that's units okay so I'm going to fill it in over here and I know x is 17.17 units all right <clears throat> Now let's move on to part, part C. Okay, part C is basically asking us what this side is, all right? <clears throat> and we're given two sides and one angle. So let's go ahead and label our triangle. So let's just say this is A, B, C. It doesn't matter the order you do this as long as once you do, you're consistent. If Big A is here, little A is here. If big B is here, little B is here. And if big C is here, little C is here. Okay, so now how do we find this? Well, <clears throat> we know angle A, side B, side C. Angle A, side B, side C. So the law of sines doesn't really help us, right? Because we don't know side A, we don't know angle B, we don't know angle C. We can't use adding the three angles equals 180 because we have two unknown angles. So hopefully the law of cosines is going to help us. Let's see if it does. We know C, right? We know we don't know A. We know B. And we don't know A. We know B. We don't know C. Okay, so this doesn't help us. Well, for this, well, let's see. We know angle A. So let's try this one. Because we, we, know, we know angle A, we know sides B and C, B and C, yes, yes, yes. And we are looking for A. Oh, perfect. So the law of cosines is going to help us find X, right? X we're going to find using A squared equals to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine A. That's exactly what we have written right here. Now let's plug in the values. Remember we're on part C. Let's plug in them in. A is x, so we get x squared equals to b squared, so b is 6.5, plus c squared, c is 7.1, minus 2 times what well, b is 6.5, and c was 7.1, times cosine of angle A is 119 degrees. All right, so now, oops, this is C squared. Make sure that it's B squared, C squared, 2BC, cosine A. Okay, good. So let's plug this into our calculator. Let me bring out my calculator. I have 6.5 squared plus 7.1 squared minus 2 times... 6.5 times 7.1 times cosine of 119 degrees. And again, I like to just check that I'm in degrees mode. And then when I enter this, I get 137.4, and that zero rounds up, right? But I'm not done yet because that's equal to x squared. So to solve for x, I need to square root both sides. And I get x equals 2. And again, it's going to be plus or minus because we're, we had x squared, meaning if we had a negative value of x, it's still going to be positive after we squared. But since we're looking at the side lengths of actual triangles, we're only looking for positive lengths because negative lengths just don't make sense. So square root of 137one and that's approximately, so let me make sure I write approximately, 11.72. Okay, the 2 next to it makes it stay as a 2. And I write units here. My calculator can go away. And here I know x is approximately 111.72 units. All right. <coughs> so... Now I can go on to part C. C, I'm told, okay, now I'm given an angle, a side. 
I want to find this side, and I'm given the area of the triangle. Okay. And again, this is not a special triangle. There's no, it's not a right triangle. It looks acute. It looks scalene, um, but it doesn't look special other than that. So let me start by labeling it. Okay. So labeling it, I have angle A, B, oops, angle A, A, angle A, B, and C. So opposite of these is going to be little b, little c, and little a. Okay, and little a we don't know either. <clears throat> and how do we find now what this is going to, how do we find what we're looking for is side x or side c? Um, so here's where we have to remember the area formula that we did a while ago, I believe it was in class, in no, when we had two sides and the angle between them, we could find the area of the triangle simply by the area of the triangle was equal to one half. Um, well, to begin with, it was one half base times height, and then we had one half base, and then this was the base, and we found our height to be. So back at the beginning of section 1.3 on problem 1-90, 1-90, we looked at triangles with, um, like this, with the side, with sides A, B, and C, A, B, C vertices, and we remember the area was then going to be one half side A was our base, times B sine of angle C to get the height. B sine of angle C to get the height. Okay? So, <clears throat> looking at this triangle, we know the area is equal to 60 centimeters squared. We know side B, um, and we know angle A. So, remember this, A, B, sine C, these were adjacent sides. A and B are adjacent, and the angle in between them. Well, we know these two sides are adjacent and form this angle. So the area is also equal to sides one half sides BC times sine of the angle in between them. Okay, so A, again, the area is 60 centimeters squared is equal to one half. Side B is 15 centimeters. Side C is our X and sine of angle A is 28 degrees. All right, <clears throat> so now all we need to do is solve for X. X is going to be, well, if we divide both sides by 1 half 15 centimeters sine of 28 degrees, 1 half 15 centimeters sine of 28 degrees, well, these cancel. And we're left with x is equal to this side. So it's 60 centimeters squared divided by 1 half 15 centimeters times sine of 28 degrees. Plug that into our calculator. So we get 60 divided by, and let's put the denominator in parentheses because we want the whole thing to be divided by it, 1 half times 15 times sine of 28 degrees. And that is our side x. So our side x is approximately 17.04 units. Okay? So let's go ahead and write that over here. 17.04 units. And actually, it wasn't just units, but we knew that we were multiplying. Um, here we had centimeters squared and centimeters, centimeters in the denominator, right? So this is going to be centimeters, right? 